Today is Saturday, September 12th, 2015, and this is the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Podcast, presented by Evil Bunny Consulting. I'm your host, Tyrone Griffin, and if it's 3 p.m. you have on your bunny slippers, you are not looking for a job. Welcome, first-time and returning listeners. In this show, we discuss strategies and tactics of job search, staying motivated, and dealing with career transition. For more tips, resources, daily motivations, and to listen to archive shows, go to the website bunnieslippersareval.com. There you will also find links to our Facebook page, Twitter handle, and our YouTube channel. If you are listening live, you can call in with your questions at 347-202-0929. Again, that number is 347-202-0929. And now a word from our sponsors. Evil Bunny Consulting is the alternative to expensive outplacement. They give company-sponsored job seeker workshops as well as the one-on-one job seeker boot camp. For more information, go to bunnieslippersareval.com. Resume Edit is the low-cost, high-quality resume writing company with resumes as low as $35, written by certified resume writers. You can find them online at resume4edit.com or call 404-860-2473. And be sure to tell them you heard about them on the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers podcast. Let 3DResumes.net turn your resume into a web page with a customized domain for 12 months for only $30. Help hiring managers and recruiters find you, make your resume available 24-7, and get a professional, personalized email address just for your job search. You can see my online resume at tyronegriffin.com, and for more information on how to get your own, go to 3dresumes.net. If you are thinking or about to look for a job in in today's world, you will find a new reality in the job search process. The world has changed. Job search today is much more complicated than five years ago. Volumes of resumes, more applicant screening systems, depersonalized applications, panel interviews, team hiring, long, complicated applications, branding and social media. Yes, the world has changed. But have you? Are you still trying yesterday's approach? Why struggle and mess it on today's opportunities? Kura Oyster is here to help. Great coaches, the latest resources, unique strategies personally tailored to your job search. Find out the new reality and how you can prevent costly mistakes. To register for a free 45-minute private session with head coach Howard Caddy, go to careeroyster.com. Find out the facts now. You'll be glad you did. Remember their motto, the world is your oyster, be the pearl. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, This is the first nighttime or afternoon show I think I've ever done. Woohoo! Thank you. For um, you know anybody listening live, thank you for uh, tuning with me this late hour. Um, scheduling just caused me to. I've been running around all day. Um, but I just couldn't do it this morning. And next week is probably going to be worse. I think next week's show will probably be at 7 a.m. I apologize for that, but I got a full Saturday, and the only way I can get everything in and get my show done is to do it too early. Believe me, I do not like getting up that early. So anyway, um, first, this is um, today's is uh, September 12th. It's uh, one day after the 14th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our country. I'm not going to get political. Um, There's a whole lot of politics when you talk about 9-11. my personal thing, this is not what this week's show is about, but I was uh, in Connecticut. I, I worked in Connecticut at the time. Um, it was about 60 miles from Ground Zero, um, World Trade Center. And uh, it was on a Tuesday, I believe. But that Saturday, I had a funeral at a uh, grand uncle that passed away in Baltimore. And I had to drive to New York to pick my mother up and take her down to Baltimore. So in one day, we passed what was the World Trade Center and the Pentagon within a week after 9-11. And uh, it was a sad time. It was a t- sad time. So I just remember those who died um, on that day. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it because it gets really political after you get there. So I just want to remember those who did die on that day those um, people in the air, people on the ground, people in planes, uh, I mean, in the buildings, the uh, first responders. Um, just, just want to remember them and pray for them. That's just me. 
<sighs> anyway, okay, so we got that out of the way. Um, so this week's show is about identity. It's like it's about how it's, a, it's about identifying with your job, um, your confidence. When when you get your confidence and your identity from your job, and this is an interesting week. When I was putting together these notes, a lot of things just happened. Um, one thing I listened to a podcast uh, called The Strangers. The website is a strangers. Google Strangers Podcast. It's one of the podcasts I listen to. And this so happens, I was doing a binge listening, and they talked about, uh, the host was talking about how married people, she heard some married people talking, and how they, every other word, these two women who were talking, every other word out of their mouth was my husband this and my husband that. And she realized that they very much so identified with their husbands. Um, like they have, they've identified with their, they identify with being married. Okay. They just, um, and it, and it made me, she, she mentioned that and it made me think about what people do when they're, when they have a job. Cause think about it. We, we oftentimes we, we really do identify a lot with, uh, our, what we do. What I mean, for example, um, and you meet somebody in a bar, you meet somebody wherever, singles event, whatever, and you know, chit chat hi, your name is da 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 da, and invariably the next question comes up is, so what do you do? You know, and people say I'm an analyst, I'm a underwriter, I'm a drafter, I'm a, uh, uh, you know, whatever, I'm a, I'm a shoe salesman, whatever. But we identify people uh, want to know something about you. They want to know how. Um, how you identify yourself uh, with your job. What's funny about that is, you know, a lot of studies have shown that a lot of people are not doing the jobs they want to do. So you're identifying with something that is not even something that you wanted to do, which is, which is kind of weird. You know, and people are judging you based on what you do versus uh, what maybe you wanted to do, which might be totally different. Um, but anyway, Listen to this podcast. It's the Strangers Podcast, the name of the podcast. Uh, it's on uh, iTunes. Um, I'm not being paid. Con uh, this is not a paid endorsement. Uh, I personally have listened to it. Um, I did a binge listen over the last couple of weeks, and I found it very entertaining, very interesting, very thought-provoking. Um, it's not, you know, some of the language is not for kids. Um, I've sent a note to the, to, the, um, to the host and just let her know that I was going to be talking about her show this week, or I was going to be mentioning her show. So, you know, if you, it's stories all over the place, um, just <laughs> really stories all over the place, um, but very good stories, very well done, um, very entertaining, very uh, thought provoking. So it's called The Strangers Podcast. Um, but anyway, the point is, you know, she listens to people and, they, and, you know, they were and identifying and it made me, you know, it reminded me of how we do that. We identify with who we are. And in transition, one of the hardest things about transition is that you don't have that title anymore. Um, you know, you're you're not a CEO, you're not a CFO, you're not a director, you're not a manager, you're not an um, assistant director, AVP, anything, and that can mess some people up because then you you have and and, and in context of this woman's show, I bring it back to that. Uh, she was saying how when she was with her, uh, her partner, uh, she, you know, she identified with that and she felt sorry for uh, single people because they didn't have, you know, they couldn't identify themselves or they didn't have the confidence that comes from having a partner. And, you know, now she's single and she realizes that she used to have that arrogance or that confidence because she was with someone and that just when I heard this it, it just hit me yeah that's exactly what happens in, in job search when you're working you're you know I'm the you know, lead manager I'm this I'm that you know you have a nice title um, I've told a story and I, I went out once with a woman when I first came out of college she was 23 year old vice president and she was a vice president because everybody all the people who started her company when they came out of all the people that came out of uh, college started, it was a, you know, cold calling firm, boiler, boiler room type situation, but they were all vice presidents so that they have that title. And you see, we put a lot on titles, you know, um, 
when you are negotiating a big a business deal, what would you rather negotiate with a manager or a vice president? Well, maybe the manager has a clue about what's going on, but they bring in the vice president, the big guns, the people with the titles, they come in. And sometimes those people may or may not have a clue what's going on, but they have the title. So they're brought in to you know, be the, be the heavy in the room or be the, the, the title, the, 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 the top dog or whatever, uh, to, to give it some validity. Um, you know, think about it in, in a um, interview process. Who would you rather be in, in, in? Who would you rather interview with? A director or a vice president? You know, because there's this theory that okay, vice presidents have more power and so on. And so, but the director or the assistant director or the manager may be the best person to conduct the interview. You know, they may be the ones who understand what is needed in the job more. But we go by titles, so we wrap a lot of ourselves up in our titles. Okay, as people, we just do that. Um, and there's a prob there can be a problem there when you find yourself in transition. Like this lady who hosts this podcast, when she was with someone, she identified with that. And she didn't realize how much of her identity and her confidence was from the idea that she was with somebody. So then when she was by herself, all of a sudden it was, oh, you know, oh, who am I? And that's what happens in transition. You find yourself without a job. You're no longer a manager. You're just one person looking for a job, you know. But you get caught up, and, and that can 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 overwhelm you, you know. Um, the fact that, again, as a people, we just are very caught up in titles, and we need to get away from that, you know, for our own sanity. You know, okay, while you're on the job, you're this, but don't let the job identify who you are. You know, that's the thing. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make with this. Don't let your job, don't, don't become your job. You are, uh, whatever your job title is, 40 or 50 hours a week. The rest of that time, you have other titles. Maybe it's husband, maybe it's father, maybe it's wife, maybe it's partner, um, maybe it's coach, maybe it's all kinds of things. But don't let that title of that job overwhelm you and, and become all you are all day. When you go to church, you're not an analyst, not a manager, you're a worshiper. You know, your titles can change, but don't get yourself, and, 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 you know, and I don't give dating advice until I do, but if you meet somebody and you're chit-chatting and, you know, resist the urge to ask them, so what do you do? You know, resist that urge because it could have nothing to do with the person. It could be, well, I'm a, I'm a sanitation engineer. Oh, you're a garbage man? Why'd you settle for that? I said, no, I didn't settle for that. Uh, that was the only position I could find. And, you know, 10 years later, that person could own the, 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 the waste disposal company. You know, um, don't get caught up in the titles. You know, don't get caught up in that. Um, and today I saw a movie um, called When the Game Stands Tall. And the movie was about... Um, LaSalle High School in California. I guess it's a true story about this high school in California. And they had a 151 game winning streak before they lost a game. And everybody was down. I was watching this show today, this movie, and I realized watching these young kids, I know it's, you know, it's, a, it's a fictionalized account of a true story, but I was watching these kids play and I realized something. You know, for them, the people in this movie, when you're winning, it is easy to be a good person. It's easy to think that you are the embodiment of all you want. It's not until you get tested that you find out how tough you are. You know, um, in this case, these people, these these young people, this team, or you know, again, they had won a hundred and excuse me, one hundred and fifty-one straight games. They had won like you know five straight state titles. So there were people who came in as freshmen and never lost a game all through high school. And they graduated having never lost a high school football game. A couple of classes like that apparently, you know, had never lost a high school football game. That's the kind of person, and that's, you know, say, oh, that's a great thing. That's what we would all want. You need some failure in your life, in my opinion. You need some setbacks because they toughen you. There's that uh, story about the, the, what is it, the egg, the coffee, and the carrot, 
believe it is, and you put them all in boiled water, and the carrot that went in very stiff and strong uh, came out very soggy. The egg that went in with a hard shell but very soft inside came out hard all the way through. Same water, it affected these things differently. And then the coffee changed the water from water to coffee. You know, each of these things were tested and they came out differently on the other side. And see, and that's the thing about life. You will get tested. Look at your transition as a test, you know, to see what you do. Remember, life is more about how you respond to it than uh, what happens to you. You can't, you can't, excuse me, sorry. You can't, um, that's what happens when you get four hours sleep. Um, you can't dictate what happens to you a lot of times, but what you can, you can't control what happens to you, but what you can control is how you respond to it. Okay. So again, egg, carrot, and coffee. It wasn't what happened to them or to all of them. The same thing happened, boiled water. Well, how did they respond? Okay. The people that make it through transition, well, you've got the worst posture. <laughs> the people that make it through transition effectively are the people that learn how to deal with it. You know, it's not just about how long will your money last. And I know that's a factor in it. But and on top of that, it's how you respond. This is, for some people, this may be their first true test. Their first time when they were... Um, considered a failure in some way. Um, maybe they came through high school and they, I mean, think about these kids who never lost a game in high school. They went to college with the biggest egos in the world because they never lost a game. They don't know what it's like. And, you know, Star Trek reference, when Captain Kirk's son died in Star Trek V, the search for Spock, when um, the son David, who he just met, and he admitted, basically, he had never had to deal with failure. You know, Captain Kirk had never truly dealt with, fa with failure. Kobayashi Maru test was not a failure because he cheated. So he cheated death. But that was the first time he actually had to deal with failure. And for some of us, transition is the first time we have actually had to deal with in our face failure. How are you going to respond? Are you going to be that carrot? that goes in all macho and comes out all soft and mushy? Or are you going to be that egg that becomes hardened all the way through? Instead of having a heart of gold, you know, surrounded by a, a, a tough shell, your heart tones your stone. Is that how you're going to respond? Or are you going to be the coffee and change the water to suit your needs? So in transition, you find yourself in transition out of a job. How are you going to behave? How are you going to handle it? Are you going to, one, curl, curl up into a corner and cry for six months and then realize you ran out of money while you were in the corner crying? Two, are you going to be mad at everybody, people who had nothing to do with you being your, your job being eliminated? Um, and you just snatch, just strike out at everybody? Or are you going to just become hard and mean and evil? You know. Or are you going to say, okay, let me change this situation? How do you change your situation transition? First of all, you keep your head up. You keep your head in the game. You, you stay focused on what you need to do. It doesn't matter how long you've been in transition. It really doesn't from a mental standpoint. You, but you have to use it at, to your advantage. You have to make it, make it so that, okay, the longer I'm here, the better I will, the more I will know the better this will be for me. The longer I am here, the more I will learn. I will get something out of this. It's like told that, you know, I've said before, two high school kids go through four years of school. One comes out with a 2.0, one comes out with a 4.0. They all went to all their classes. What's the difference? One of them paid attention, the other one didn't. You have to spend this time in transition until you land your next opportunity, whatever this time is, however long this time is. You have to spend this time here. Learn something about yourself. You know, learn something about job search. Learn something about holding on to a job. Learn something about 
maintaining your marketability. You know, get will is it scary? Oh yes, it's scary. It sucks, but transition is just as scary as anything else, if not more. Use it to your advantage. Come out of transition. Come out the other side. When you do land that next opportunity, well, between the time when you're laid off and when you land that next opportunity, excuse me, keep your head up. Stay focused. Your job is to find a job. I've said that before. That's when I was in transition. That was my job. It was to find a job. Okay? And I spent every day trying to find a job. And when something came along, I was in the right situation. I was in the right position and I had the right attitude. And that's the thing about it. You don't want to get your attitude. You don't, you, don't, you don't want to get your panties in the bunch. Sorry, ladies. I know that probably is very sexist, but you don't want to do that. Fellas, you don't want to get your tidy whities in the bunch. All squinched up, you know. Sorry for that visual, y'all. But you don't want to do that. Because, first of all, your attitude is you wear it on your face. You wear your attitude on your face. So you go, you lose a job and then you go to three four, or four interviews and you never get a job. And then you realize the reason you haven't gotten a job because you went in angry, still angry about. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, been up since like 5.30 this morning and it's 6 o'clock now. Yeah, out in the sun and working on my tan. And, but anyway, um, you get that funky attitude um, I've talked about it, you know, I, we let somebody go in one of my jobs one time because this person had a funky attitude. They could do the work. They were excelling at the work, but their attitude was so toxic that it was starting to feed around the team. And, you know, they talked to this person several times and they never listened. And then all of a sudden they found that their contract, you know, they were, they were gone and it was because of attitude. And that's what can happen to you in transition. You get out here and you have a funky attitude. Nobody wants to deal with you. Okay? Nobody wants to deal with you. So don't let that... Excuse me. I, I apologize, everybody. I really am sorry. I'm exhausted, but I, I apologize for, for, this, for the audience. It's not that this topic is boring because I'm talking. I'm never boring. But um, don't let your attitude... You know, don't let that confidence that comes from being employed uh, mess you up when you're not employed anymore. Okay, the old thing about the, the, the feet you step on on the way up or connected to the behind, you got a kiss on the way down. It's very true in job search. I've known people who were stars in their companies. They were true stars. They were, you know, got their promotions every year. They were true uh, superstars. And they find themselves out of a job. And then they didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I have a karate student and I don't, you know, he didn't leave a note, so we don't know if this was all the situation, but he was currently, he was in, a, in job search at the time he committed suicide. I don't want anybody else doing that, you know. When you have a job, be humble. i said that many times. Be humble. Be thankful for the job you have, no matter how well you're doing. Come in every day and be thankful for that job. Don't identify with that job because that job could be snatched from under you in an instant. And then what do you have? You have to be who you are. So be who you are. Identify with who you are, not with what you do. Okay? Don't, um, don't get caught up in, I'm an analyst. I'm a, I'm a director. I'm, a, I'm a, a contract. I'm a consultant. I'm something. You're a person. Okay? Don't get caught up in what your title is. Because when that title goes away, You've got nothing. And that is the worst thing in the world to realize you have nothing. Okay, so don't get caught up in that type. You know, be, be yourself. Somebody asks, what do you do? Well, how about if you, you know, let me tell you about what I like to do, my, my, my hobbies. That will give you more insight to who I am. That'll blow somebody's mind. You know, um, you say, well, I'm a doctor. See, back when I was a kid, if you said, oh, I'm a doctor, you, that meant, that was translation for you were rich, okay? Doctors, lawyers, pilots, they were rich. They made a ton of money. Well, yeah, well global, globalization really shut that one down. Between that and the stock market crashing, I know doctors have been out of work. I know doctors and lawyers that have been out of work. I know doctors and lawyers who are um, you know, pretty much living like normal people because they're not getting the money they used to make. 
you know. Um, but if you, you know, somebody says to you, what do you do? Tell them what you like to do. Tell them what you do. Okay. Unless, you know, your job that you have is your dream job. No reason to, to, to go into it because it's not my, it's my job at this time. I'm trying to, to get to someplace. This is just where I am at this time on this job. Telling you that I am an analyst tells you nothing about me. If you really want to know about me, then let me tell you what my hobbies are. Let me tell you what kind of music I like to listen to. Let me tell you what I like to do with my lazy Saturdays. Okay, let me tell you about the relationship I have with my family. You want to know about me? That's how you learn about me. Okay, not who my job is. You know, that's Monday morning. That's Monday morning. I got to make money to support my family. I'm only doing this to support my family. And rest assured, that is the only reason people, we go to work. Think for a heartbeat. If your job, your company, stop paying payroll, you rest, best believe the place will be empty the next day. Yeah, it will be empty. We go to work for money. Don't forget that. We don't, you know, so don't get caught up in your titles, whether it be at church. You know, I know some people who are uh, caught up in titles at church. You know, they got a certain title and that's all that's important to them. I'm not the one, as they found out recently. Um, rat hole, take a sip. It's kind of bad to be taking a sip on something I talked about with church, but oh well. But really, um, don't get caught up in your titles and understand and recognize that your titles are not who you are and that, but it's very natural to fall into that, to that, um, to that trap, you know, just like, you know, I, to give the example on the, the podcast, uh, strangers, um, she heard married women talking about, you know, every other word was their husband, their husband, their husband. And that's when she realized they identified so well with, with their, 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 their confidence and their identity was based in them being married. When they, and, and she used to be in that situation, and now she's a single person, and it was messing with her head. You know that she, you know, she had so much of her identity was gone. You know. Anyway, um, apologize if I rambled a bit on this episode. I, I truly am sorry. I'm tired. Um, somebody, I might be going out to help somebody move tonight, so I'm having a great day. But anyway, thanks for listening. If you are listening on the website, feel free to subscribe in iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave me some feedback. Uh, so others can find the show and i truly appreciate it if you have a suggestion for a topic that you would like me to cover in either the podcast or a one minute buddy tip send it to me at tyrone at bundy slippers or evil.com and when you land please don't forget us please support the show by visiting our cafe press store and buying a t-shirt a water bottle a coffee mug a clock or a sweatshirt so you have a memento of your time in transition but i don't want you to forget this time people because the moment you forget this time is when you set yourself up to be in transition again, okay? And that's the worst thing, to set yourself to be out here again, to realize you had an, a great opportunity and you flushed it away because of something that didn't make sense. Okay, so bottom line is this, you are not your job, okay? You are not your job. Don't forget that, you are not. You are a person. Don't identify with it. You understand and say, what do you do? This is what I do to put food on the table right now. This is not the only job I've ever had. And this is probably not the only job. I. This is not the last job I will have. So what I'm doing right now is doing what I have to do to put food on the table. Now, again, if you want to know about me, ask me questions about me. Ask me what I like to do for fun. Going to work is not what I like to do for fun. Okay. Uh, but remember that that's that Pina Colada song is going through my head right now. Some of y'all are old enough to remember that song. If you like Pina Colada, yeah, and and uh, all the stuff that the person likes to do, and I'm, it's going through my head right now. And I can't get out of my head. But anyway, um, but anyway, seriously, folks, um, I apologize for this week was kind of crazy. This show, I apologize for the er, for the late timing of this show. Um, Again, next week's probably going to be at 7 o'clock because um, i got to do something at 8. So it's like do the show, phew, take off running. And then the rest of the day is going to be tied up as well. But I am humbled and thank you for all your kind words and kind, and kind support that you've always given me on this show. And I just keep trying to do a better show every week. With that, everybody, have a good week. Take care, and I will see you soon. And bye-bye. <laughs>